Hey, what's going on, crypto people? Hey, what's going on, crypto people? It is the Crypto Siege with another day in the life, in the crazy life that is the digital asset space. Good morning. Happy Friday. I think this is Friday. Happy Friday to you. Yeah, so I am going to upload a, a drive time video that I did yesterday. I'm still going to upload it. Yes, I know it was yesterday, uh, Thursday, but I'm going to upload it in any case because I know you guys like to drive time videos. And I'm not sure if I'll be able to do a drive time video today. So guys, listen, uh, the market is doing this thing. Very, very cool. Uh, I'm going to share some stuff from Twitter today from some TA guys. Uh, uh, one that has been on Twitter has been, you can tell there's a difference. Uh, got DIY investing, younger guy, new to the TA, to the TA uh, space from 2016, 2017. You got another guy, Joker, um, who, listen, I don't know the guy, but and I haven't, he, doesn't, he doesn't do videos, but he has been a guy who's been constantly correct on his TA, if you will, in the digital asset space, has been constantly correct. Seems as though he may be more of an, an older, and I don't want to use the word, uh, let's use experience, an older and more experienced trader in this space. I'm going to share a tweet from him and DIY investing, so stay tuned for that. So guys, the market is what the market is. I mean, hey, what can you say, right? So we'll we'll go over some stuff from there. I think it's um, it's important to kind of note. So guys, listen, I'm going to get through this really, really quick. This is your XRP Ripple daily news in around <laughs> zero to ten minutes. I gotta I gotta figure out where I'm supposed to be starting here. That's a great point from Ryan Selkies. Here's something that's very, very interesting, guys. Just, just listen. Shout out to Maki. Michael at Bow Five Links on uh, on Twitter, without question, a definite follow. This is a guy who continues to add value to the community every single day. This is an interesting article, or uh, I believe it's just on a Coin um, uh, website. With yep, CoinJournal.net, and this is something you have to be hugely, hugely, hugely careful with. So YAM, Y-A-M, crashed from $167 to 60 cents in minutes, in minutes, with over 750,000 worth of curved tokens likely lost. Uh, it's funny because I was listening to Sam I am briefly when he, when he was talking about, um, and I want to continue to listen to that, when he was explaining the Flare Network and he, he was talking about the DeFi uh, and how it works with coins and buying these other coins because this other coin in this particular space is doing good on the protocol or whatever. Like it was like a DeFi kind of, kind of mess, if you will. Uh, I don't know if it's a conundrum, but it, it, it was a complicated thing. I've never done the die thing. Uh, I think I bought well, a century. I tested it once with a small amount of bucks, bucks, maybe 50 bucks or 70 bucks or something like that. They kind of see, I didn't get it. And, uh, you know, I think one of the best approaches is if you don't understand it, don't get involved in it. But this is brutal, right? With over 1,500,000, 750,000 worth of current tokens likely lost. The price of YAM token has crashed 99%, currently trading at 62 cents after hitting a high of $167 only yesterday. And so this goes into a little bit of the article here from um, coinjournal.net. Yam has crashed 99% after security flaws was found. Security, after security flaw was found. So Yam token, a DeFi token launched on Tuesday has crashed by more than 99%. Wow. A DeFi token launched on Tuesday after hitting a high of 167 on Wednesday, August 12, Yam crashed to nearly zero with its market value melting within minutes on Thursday, August 13. That, my friends, has got to be hugely, hugely beautiful. Ungovernable. Yam's demise started early today after it was discovered that its rebase function had a flaw that essentially means your protocol has no control over its on-chain Governance again. Uh, look, uh, what is the thing? Where's the quote from the guy who said, He says, I'm sorry, everyone, I have failed. Thank you for your insane support today. I'm sick with grief. So, guys, be very, very careful. 
All right, so this is something from Ryan Selkies I think is hugely important if we're going to be in this space, right? And I, you know, we say in this channel a lot of times, you know, we have to be careful as early adopters in this space because we are consistently used to the 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 10,000, 20,000 percent returns, 30,000 percent returns. I just saw something with 64,000 percent return. I mean, look at that protocol, what it's doing right now. And we have, and sometimes we can get caught up in those and lose the 10x and lose sight of the 5x, the 10x, and the 15x's, if you will. We have to be very, very careful of that. Ryan Selke's here um, makes a really, really, really great point. Crypto investing is quote unquote easy if you are early and lucky, right? Slant, lucky. If you're late, you'll need a 10x return, which is rare, to offset your 90% losers, which are common. This happened last cycle and it will happen this cycle. If you don't have an edge, let us stick with BTC and ETH and just learn. And what he means by that, if you don't have an edge and that you discovered something early, you've done your due diligence on it early and you've done your homework on it early, for example, this is a great example. This is the Binance Launchpad, right? And the IELs there. I just discovered, I have not been in there. I have not been in it on those. I just discovered that it's been a minimum of 4X there uh, for those things there. Because it's usually, hugely popular for whatever the reason. It's usually, who's the popper? A guy shared on Twitter how he got in, you know, on this IEO. I mean, he turned 220 bucks or 200 bucks to 1668 bucks in a matter of minutes, right? In a matter of 200 bucks, right? A little small investment, right? And then he also pointed out the minimum returns there have been 4X. What do you know about Binance Launchpad? I'm going to do more research and looking into this to see what that is about um, and learn more about it, right? Because, I mean, the numbers are what the numbers are. But the thing is, crypto investing, that 200, think about that. The guy on Twitter said, I registered for this just seven days ago. Seven days ago, he put a small amount, right? Kind of testing the waters. I don't know. $200 may be a small amount, may not be a small amount for him, right? $200, seven, eight, nine days later, it's $1,668. Seven X. Seven X, right? So I think this is a great point by Ryan Selkis to pay kind of attention to it. And again, if you don't have an edge, Better stick with BTC and ETH, right? Anyone questioning whether ETH is going to get you a 10, uh, 8, 9, 10x return? Anyone questioning whether BTC is going to get you the 8, 9, 10x return? The return on your money, not on their money, your money, right? And not on the, the Winklevoss's money. The people who are early to the game, you got to get that on your money. The, guy, the people who are early, slant lucky, right? Novogratz of the world, early, slant lucky, to be able to participate early. That's not you. That's not, if that's you in the last couple of years, last couple of years, that's not, that's, you know, 15, 16, I would say 17 and 18, 19, that's not early. That's not lucky for BTC, if you will, for BTC. ETH perhaps, right? But if that was not you today, you're looking at this thing today for the first time, 2020, that's not you. So, you know, those thousands and tens of thousands of percent gains, not probably going to happen in BTC and E. But on your money, the eight, nine, and 10 X's, that's a great possibility in my opinion. Certainly not financial advice. I'm not trying to go buy some BTC or E. But what I'm saying is, look at the numbers, right? Look at the numbers, you know. I, for me, in a crypto seizures home, I have no doubt in the 8, 9, 10x return on my money in BTC and ETH. T like today, like if I did it today, if I bought some BTC today, if I bought some ETH today, the crypto seizures home is very comfortable in the 8, 9, 10x return on that money. If it's $100, it's $500. If it's $500, if it's $1,000. And that's the thing that I think is so very, very, everyone's looking for the less than a penny things, right? Everyone's looking for those. And in my opinion, it's missing out. 
on the safe eight, nine, and ten, ten axis as though though as though those weren't good, right? <laughs> those are pretty good, right? So, so this is interesting. Uh, again, just some of the oh man, did I miss DIY? Did I have it? Ah, oh, wait a minute. I want to show DIY. So I tweet. Uh, let's see first. Then I'll show you the jokers. Um, yeah. So here it is. This is from DIY Investing. Again, young guy, him in high altitude investing. I think one guy's name is Donovan and the other one is Dallin. Dallin, 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 Dallin. All right. So anyway, young guys, you know, um, DIY Investing, a lot of you guys know him. Very, very popular on YouTube for, uh, uh, look, look, he's a TA and he's a charts guy. Um, but he's, you know, he, you know, he does this thing with XRP as well. I've always kind of liked the way he's kind of gone and looked into it from his perspective. And, um, both him and, and BC backer, right? BC backer, right? So he won a huge coming, huge move coming for XRP. At the recent breakout of the bear market downtrend, XRP is showing more signs of continuation. The next move coming will be huge. Guys, go check out DIY Investing. See if what he says and his videos make sense to you. See if it makes sense to you, right? Uh, so yeah, so that, I did watch that. And of course he pointed back to the different things with the, um, the charts. And this is kind of things he's expecting. He's always said he expects a double digit XRP, you know, uh, end of 2021, end of 2021, not end of 2020, the end of 2021, right? And so here's a guy, again, who has been on Twitter. Um, this guy, to me, I, I don't know, but again, to me, feels like an older, uh, probably more experienced, that sort of feels like, again, I don't know, feels like um, to me. This is what he says. A, def a definite trader showing the charts here as well, right? I won't be surprised to see an XRP USD at $14.00. The days to accumulate XRP below a dollar is numbered. The DT399 algo, algo rhythm triggered the buy signal on the daily chart. The time XRP, the last time that happened, pumped to $3. Pump boom, to $3, okay? And I, he, yeah. Given the Elliott Waves theory, Wave three can target, can target $8. And wave five can target $14. And again, from me watching his tweets over the years, here's a guy who's kind of come out with some charts and he's been spot on. <laughs> he's been pretty much spot on every single time. So take that, you know, take that for what you believe it to be worth yeah it didn't mention the time exactly yeah yeah didn't mention the time exactly and so i know i've seen blockchain back are talking about you know 55 dollar xrp right uh and so in any case my plans in crypto sieges home is a double digit xrp by the end of 20 21. That's the plan for us. Uh, what happens in 2020 happens in 2020. Cool. Uh, but my plan, right, our plan is to look for the double digit gains um, by the end of 2021. Look, that's what we're looking at. That is, it doesn't mean it's not going to happen soon, but this is what we're planning on for things that we're going to plan to do, right, and with our life and our family. So interesting thing there. Again, if you're not following this guy, maybe you want to look into it and see, see, check out his chart, see if it makes sense to you. But in any case, if you hold the greatest digital asset ever created, you hold it. That's a cool deal. <sighs> so this is what I just, <laughs> uh, Galgatron is something, guys. Galgatron is something. So a lot of you probably know from watching Crypto Eddie and some other videos, it was uh, apparently an interview, quote unquote, if you will. I know how those interviews go. Uh, with Brad Garlinghouse and this guy here at Nathaniel Popper. Uh, I don't know, if the, I believe it was the New York Times um, uh, or the Financial Times of the New York Times, something along those lines, an article. 
Now, I remember looking at this particular article and thinking, wow, it's a lot of, it's a lot of uh, slights in this article. There's a lot of, you know? And so I'm like, mm, I'm not gonna go over this video, right? I'm not gonna go over this article, right? So here's the thing, a lot of people don't know it, but I just kind of let you guys know that in, in, in the world today of the internet, right? Google, uh, like we train uh, our business partners, Google acts like a, um, a like it's a, it's a voting, it's, a, you know, it's essentially voting online. And so the way it works is if you click on an article, Google says that's a vote for yes, that that article is important, that that article is correct, that that article is relevant, right? And so the more people share it on YouTube, the more people go and check it out, it stays up there in a the higher ranking, stay, 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 stays, because more people click on it, right? Because the challenge is, number one, that's what Google does, number one, you know, oh, okay, it's relevant, they click on it. The other part challenge of that is people tend to move towards negative. They tend to move towards negative. That's why the news does the news channels, that's why they do what they do. People don't tend to move towards happy, optimistic, positive. People tend to move towards unhappy, negative, and uh, not optimistic, right? And so, this understand, so that's kind of one of the reasons why I chose not to go over the article on the video, because I didn't, I didn't want to see more people going to the article and clicking on it, keeping it, quote unquote, relevant, in Google's eyes, but I do love <laughs> Galgatron's response to said article. <laughs> oh, Galgatron, it says, Defs, and this is the author, uh, this is the guy who did the interview or wrote the article, right? Desperate to find relevance, spin master Nathaniel Popper attempts a reset <laughs> by cherry picking parabolic outlier data to rail against Ripple's burgeoning success story. Integrity journalism has left the building. <laughs> oh, leave the goggle trying to just put it. All right, he, he reminds me of, of, of a good friend of mine uh, back in the day that had this way of uh, putting you in a chokehold and give you a little nudgy or widgy or something uh, you know, with words. And this is, this, this is one of those examples. Shout out to Gal Gatron. <laughs> shout out to Gal Gatron. All right, guys. So look, shout out to James Rule XRP for sharing this. Very, very important to understand. Bull time, bull run time. South Korea, Asia, you know, the Asian market. I mean, Japan, China, whatever. Led, led the bull market. I mean, they were the leaders in the bull market. So I think this is important to understand. Crypto adoption incoming to the masses. Four of the top five, uh, four of the top five South Korean banks to offer crypto services. South Korea, four of the top five. That is pretty huge. Okay, I'm not going to go over this article, but just just pay attention. Two more South Korean banks are looking at crypto custody options. I remember when. Greg Garlinghouse said banks were going to custody digital assets. Well, how about that? He was a little off in his timing, but he was still correct. South Korea's Wu Ri and Shin Han banks have just announced their intention to introduce crypto asset, crypto asset services. That means that four of the country's top five banks holding a combined value of more than 1.2 trillion and assets are now poised to introduce crypto services. Very, very cool to understand where we're going. Mass adoption is on its way. However, slow, slowly it is on the way. This is a shout out to Mac Attack XRP. Grayscale says XRP has the potential. First of all, James Rule and Mac Attack XRP, two guys who definitely continue to take their time, energy, and resource to continually, constantly add value to the XRP community. And we thank you for that, brothers. Thank you.
Grayscale says XRP has potential to sizably share from two trillion in global payment market. Uh, Grayscale, the world's largest crypto asset fund manager, is growing in the support of the third largest crypto by market capitalization. Now, I did I did download the uh, report. It it came out in 2019, but I know that there are people that are new to the space, so we're going to cover this. Why might uh, why might XRP have the potential? This is from Grayscale and the tweet on their uh, Twitter. The potential to capture significant value from the two, you know, plus trillion global payment market. Download our building blocks report on XRP to learn more. Largest crypto mat, uh, assets under management, Grayscale. And this is the this is the report here. You can certainly go to Grayscale, Grayscale on Twitter and find it out and find it yourself and kind of look into it. But I think it's important to know Grayscale doing major things, right? Just came out with the ad, and I love that they're educating people on the greatest digital asset ever created. <laughs> By design, XRP is unlike many of its digital currency counterparts. Instead of supporting blockchain protocol, it uses the XRP ledger to validate transactions by requiring network participants, uh, participants to reach consistent consensus. In addition, the development and maintenance of the technology is partially overseen by Ripple, which is funded through their own reserves of XRP and by private investments from an influential investors, including Andreessen Horowitz, Google Ventures, Digital Currency Group, and Pantera Capital. That, my friends, is quite a list of people to be backing your project. Uh, XRP Ledger technology is also integrated with a unique subset of Ripple's products and services. Uh, example, RippleNet on-demand liquidity, targeted specifically for financial institutions. These factors have propelled XRP's increasing adoption as a global payment rail and helped to establish XRP as the third largest digital asset in the ecosystem by market cap. Listen, they did a pretty good job here. Really, really good uh, in sharing. But it's just important to note, Grayscale, absolutely massive. The digital asset, this new asset class is upon us. So you definitely want to check this out um, as well when you get some time. Level up your XRP IQ is hugely important. Level up your digital asset space, the overall digital asset space IQ. That's hugely important. And level up your financial IQ. It's hugely important because it's not about your exit strategy. It is, my friend, in my humble opinion, about your wealth strategy. All right, guys, listen, I'm going to end this video. I can do all of my videos and remind you guys of this. Old money doesn't want you to win. They don't want us to win. They would rather us remain a cog in their perpetual wheel of trading our time for dollars. They don't want us to play in the same playground that they play in where we allow our money to work for us. This is our chance to win, guys. The digital asset space is our chance to win. We are in the midst of the greatest transfer of wealth in the history of man. Are you participating? Or are you standing on the sideline? Here's what I do know. that The battle for you has already been fought. And the victory is yours. Go get it. I'll talk to you soon, guys. See ya. Bye.